mission through Nazi Germany just shortly after the war, which is the uh, Lockridge device, of which I have right here. I'm going to tell you a little short story that uh, just shortly after the war, um, two soldiers were assigned to do cleanup operations through probably something that was going on under paperclip or something. And, um, Project paperclip. Yeah. Well, I don't know much about paperclip, but. But that was the program where we repatriated Nazi scientists to right. the U.S. Yes. And it was known as Project Paperclip. Anyway, um, one of the soldiers' names was uh, Lockridge, the last name. And uh, I guess they stumbled across in a warehouse this machine that was running known as the Lockridge device, which was self-powering itself. And at that time, of course, it, uh, it was built from a Bosch generator. So I guess what the soldiers did was they, did, they never turned it in uh, to their commanding officer. They just packed it up in a box and got it at home and worked on it when they got home. And the little thing about Lockridge was that uh, after the after the war, he was known as the town drunk. And anyway, a little explanation of the machine. What this machine was was a converted Bosch generator that had sort of like a pull cord, and you flipped a switch and you wound the cord around it. And you gave her a pull, and she took off and went ding, 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 until she got up to 5,000 RPMs, at which point in time you could draw a maximum load of 300 watts. And of course, at that time, it was light bulbs, because they were using it for lighting and a small little wire-wound 6-volt heater. But if you exceeded the 300 watts, you killed the machine. So, a little explanation of the machine is the generator casing everybody knows is this iron casing. And uh, what was done different is a normal generator would have its poles, say, like this. and then the armature would be in between her. So you'd have a north pole here and a south pole here. And then you'd have some brushes here. And then of course you'd, you'd normally in a generator, one would go to one brush and the other one would go to the field wire. And then the armature, which is in here in, in commutator segments, and you always, uh, with a generator, when you're gonna, when you replace a generator, or use a generator, is you always polarize the generator so that, so that there's some residual magnetism in these poles. So if you just took the normal generator and put a, uh, a pulley on it and then wrapped a pull cord around it and gave it a pull, it would self-energize itself and light the headlight just for a few seconds and then go back out. But that's not the Lockeridge device because what the GI has actually seen was something far different. They couldn't figure out where the power source was or where the battery was that was running this, so they just stopped the machine forcefully, from what I understand. What do you mean forcefully? Forcefully. Put their foot on the rotating mass okay. and stopped it. Of course, the lights went out and um, and they uh, packed it up and hit it very well. Got it back home. Got it back here to the USA. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is, I think that this is somewhere down in Boise. That's where 
the people that own these Lockridge machines were to be found at the time. Of course, they're all dead now, and most of the houses have been torn down. And anyway, the Lockridge.